Hello students, in this video I am going to discuss with you a question, an important question from GS Main's paper 1 and that is Indian history theme and in Indian history this theme is related to modern Indian history and national movement and the question that has been asked in the paper was like this that what was the difference between Mahatma Gandhi and Ravindranath Tagore in their approach towards education and nationalism. Now this question, the most challenging part of this question is that we have to write the answer in specified words that is in the limit of 150 words. This topic itself is very broad. Gandhi and Ravindranath Tagore, they are the most important personalities but the most important contribution in the freedom of our country okay and in involve evolving the india as a nation these two persons have great contributions and the ideas which have been discussed in this question which have been asked in the question is again gandhi we have to discuss education also and we have to discuss about the concept of nationalism right given by gandhi again in the same question we have to discuss the second part, Ravinna Tagore approach on education and approach on nationalism. So this is a very difficult question with respect to the word limit that has been given in the question. So while writing the answer of this question, we are again going to follow the same format which we have followed in our previous answer. For example, the simple format is that we will write an introduction and the introduction must be very simple because okay you cannot waste the words while write, in writing you can say that introduction that will consume a lot of words so introduction will be simple and then in main body of your answer you will divide the main body of your answer into two parts in one part you are going to explain about Gandhi his ideas on education and his ideas on nationalism this means this will be the part one of your main body and in part two, you can explain about RNT, Ravinna Tagore, ideas on education as well as ideas on nationalism. And finally, you can write a very simple conclusion here. You can write a very simple conclusion, right? So, we are going to discuss this question based on the same format and within the specified limit, the word limit that has been asked in this question, right? So, this question <clears throat> in introduction you can use your own creative imagination for this introduction but here i have given a very simple introduction and that is approach of gandhi and tagore towards education and nationalism were very unique as well as they were very significant in nature so this serves the purpose of a very simple introduction right now in main body of your answer i have discussed with you earlier that we are going to divide it into two parts gandhi and ravindranath tagore so in Gandhi, the first part is education that I am discussing here. What were the Gandhi's outlook on education? So simply, what was the Gandhi's outlook on education? While discussing the lectures in our Indian history classes, we have discussed that Gandhi focused on basic education, right? Mass-based education. Gandhi focused on this approach of education that besides learning, focus must be given on 3h and what is the meaning of 3h here so here h means hand it means about the education must be imparted that should be capable of developing some skills in the individual that should be job centric in approach okay that should be capable of producting crafts it means gandhi's main focus was what on the promotion of craft we all know gandhi focused on these cottage industries right he was in the favor Okay, so basically Gandhi was focusing his idea that besides learning, we should also keep this in mind. Diversification of crafts, their richness, that is also an important part. For example, Government of India has recently announced a policy and that is what PM Vishwakarma Yojana, right? PM Vishwakarma Yojana, there, is, there are other schemes like the Skill Development Mission, okay? So all these schemes indicate what? They indicate that skill training, skill imparting 
and giving official support to the people in order to promote promote these skills is very important for the nation's growth so on education gandhi has a very practical idea that this education should be capable of imparting skills to the people the second is hurt so what is the meaning of hurt here it talks about the moral purification it means the system of education which we are getting this must be capable of promoting ethical behavior right among the people so this is what moral purification and head means what okay it talks about spiritual upliftment definitely by promoting morality by promoting ethical standard and behavior in human we can further do what we can further focus on the spiritual upliftment so these are the different approaches that gandhi was saying gandhi focused on primary education gandhi focused on primary education gandhi had this opinion that okay below the age of 7 years all the children must be given free and compulsory education right gandhi focused on vernaculars gandhi focused on vernaculars right now value based education system gandhi talks about this value based education system gandhi says that education while imparting education giving education while designing curriculum of the syllabus curriculum of the syllabus we must keep it in mind that education must be aimed to promote harmonious development of mind body and heart and finally focus on vernacular so these are a few points we can write in bullet format and now the expression of all these things we see where we see in varda scheme 1937 so instead of writing each and everything in detail we can write indicative points we can write here varda scheme 1937 we all are familiar with this that in 1937 provincial elections were conducted right and governments were formed in some provinces and finally and a conference was organized right it was a national conference and in that conference gandhi's ideas about education system was developed discussed right this is called varda scheme later on dr jakir husain we know this he was appointed at the chairman okay but still this could not be implemented but this indicate the ideas of gandhi on education so these are very simple ideas so while writing answer we must keep it in mind that we don't have the scope to further elaborate the points so we can write indicative points and that too in okay point wise fashion point wise fashion only keywords you have to write and this you can write you cannot go for further details now the second part of this question in gandhi was his ideas and approach on nationalism here also we can write some indicative points for example the ideas of nation and nationalism these expressions found in these concepts the concepts of swaraj and ramraj and gandhi defined this meaning of swaraj in a very unique manner right according to gandhi swaraj does not mean political freedom only right swaraj does not mean political freedom only it also includes economic freedom it also includes social freedom okay and according to gandhi it also means that all the forms of discrimination from the society must be ended right so gandhi by his constructive works in indian national movement was promoting what by his constructive works gandhi was trying to promote the hindu muslim unity and gandhi was trying to end the strict social divisions that were present in society right abolition of untouchability this was also focused by gandhi right the status of women women must get the equal rights to men like men in the society so we find the expression of gandhi's nation and nationalism in his ideas of swaraj and ram raj okay where he talks about the social economic and political upliftment of the country and the role of unity in this process is very important now the second point is that okay according to gandhi's opinion his main focus on this nationalism was on spiritual spirit and he was also focusing on this idea of religious universalism and when we say religious universalism it means we are talking about this idea that there are different religions in our country right but all these different religions are like the different destinations sorry are like the different path 
to reach at the same destination so they all talk about okay the different path that lead to the same destination again this will promote what social unity so this idea was also widely discussed the third and the most important point here is that growth of nationalism in india was a result of cultural diversity moral and spiritual progress and there was no british rule in this process basically these two points are part of a debate and in this debate gandhi says that in india the growth of nationalism was not the result of british contribution it means in india in growth of nationalism gandhi rejected the role of british in this process and he says that in india the growth of nationalism it was a result of our cultural diversity so gandhi always respected this pluralistic society right multicultural ethos in the society gandhi always respected this and he said that india developed as a nation okay this social political all this kind of unity developed in india as a result of moral and spiritual progress in, in india it means cultural factors are responsible for the growth of nationalism so gandhi's focus on these ideas so basically we can write some indicative points here so this part we have written okay now the second part in the main body is that tagore's outlook tagore's outlook on education this is the first part tagore's outlook on education so what we can write here about tagore's outlook on education so first let's discuss about tagore's outlook on education so first tagore had a very dynamic and unique approach towards education right tagore rejected the conventional method of schooling system he himself did not attend the school he was in this favor he said that the school curriculum the school activities the kind of the traditional pattern conventional pattern that we are following is not good right it kills the creativity in the children so rnt ravinna tagore was basically focusing okay a system of education that is nature based right second a system of education that is practice based nature based learning and practice based learning obviously when we will promote such kind of education system so this will do what it will promote creativity right among children so this was the idea that creativity must be promoted among the children now the second point is that his focus was also more on analysis and interpretation today we find that in education system we lack this thing right this is an age of information overload right this is an age of information overload so today also we are facing this problem that the young generations right they have a lot of information but we are lacking analysis and interpretation right we are for analysis and interpretation we find that today also the younger generations are basically dependent on interpretation and analysis of others and this is the major lack in our education system education must be imparted in such a manner that you should be able to do analysis of what you have studied do your own interpretation and that interpretation must be progressive so this is the basic purpose of education which we are still lacking now next he his this expression of tagore's idea okay we can see in the form of some institutions now this fact is very popular all of you are familiar with this shanti niketan okay it means ravindranath tagore right his ideas of education right they were given a practical form okay they were implemented in practical manner through this shanti niketan concept and this shanti niketan further developed into vishwa bharati university so this expression of tagore's ideas about education can be seen in the form of these institutions also right and he also discussed that adoption of thoughts according to the present scenario should be the basic objective of our education system and this will promote environmental consciousness among the students this will also promote moral values among the students this will also promote interpersonal skills among the student and finally this will promote 
a community and society oriented awareness among the students in the coming generations so these were the ideas of ravindranath tagore on education right now the second part of this question was after this uh, uh, the second part of this question was what was tagore's idea on nationalism now one thing again i want to repeat that we cannot further elaborate these points i am discussing so that you could understand this topic but while writing this in examination you can write the keywords only there is no any scope to further explain now in second part we have to discuss ravindranath tagore ideas on nationalism now what he is discussing here so two aspects of nationalism has been discussed by ravindranath tagore the first approach was what he visualized right this nationalism beyond the national map what does it mean a simple example i am giving you for example nationalism and nation right it's not only in case of india in european countries nation state developed right there was nationalism in european people also aggressive nationalism was promoted and in european countries what happened as a result of this aggressive nationalism right the people started supporting the exploitative tendencies like the colonialism and imperialism this happened right it means colonialism and imperialism like exploitative tendencies got a social validity right due to this growing nationalism why because the people are thinking about the concerns of their own country they are not thinking about the concerns of the other countries so according to ravindranath tagore when we talk about nation when we talk about nationalism so we should always look beyond the national map so we can simply at this point that we can simply look beyond the national map it means we should consider humanity right we should consider the entire world as a village right vasudhaiva kutumbakam we should consider to promote the interest of the humanity as a whole right so gandhi is looking at this concept nationalism from this perspective also it means international humanistic concerns were also expressed by ravindranath tagore right uh, <clears throat> while expressing this idea of nationalism ravindranath tagore himself writes that i am a poet of the world in one of his poem he writes these lines i am a poet of the world what does it indicate it indicates the right concern of ravindranath tagore it indicates that he is defining nationalism not from a very you can say that uh, he is uh, defining it in a very broad manner right he is he has a broad perspective he is not defining from a narrow perspective right now but at the same time he also visualized nation and nationalism from inside what does it mean it means that his concept is that the nation means what the social unity must be promoted and when we talk about this social unity the feeling of oneness among the masses among the people right so it means what we should focus on ending discrimination we should focus on ending this system of privileges and in this way we can promote equality in the society right and if we will think from both these two aspects finally this will bring forward the shape of a true nation so definitely we cannot explain the entire thing but just we can write some indicative points that yes these are the ideas of ravindranath tagore on nationalism clear now we have discussed the main part of the question where we have discussed about what in main body we discussed about what gandhi we discussed about the gandhi's outlook on education okay then we discussed about gandhi's outlook on nationalism this is one part of our answer now in second part we discussed about tagore's outlook on education and then we discussed about tagore's outlook on nationalism also and finally we can write a simple conclusion and the conclusion is that gandhi and tagore both were successful in exploring the moral consciousness of the nation in this way we can write a simple conclusion okay while writing the introduction while writing the conclusion you can use your own imagination also points also but at last i will again remind you that the kind of the questions that upsc is asking there is no more scope to write a lot of things a lot of content so we should have filtered information we should have keywords we should have the understanding of the essence of the topic and then by simply writing the points in bullet format 
by simply following by simply following this structure of introduction body and conclusion okay ibc structure by simply following this we can write effective answers right thanks to all of you